Want to take your VoiceFlow chatbot to the next level? This video will show you exactly how to display images, audio, and even videos within your chatbot conversation. Go beyond text-based interactions and create a more engaging and informative experience for your users. We'll explore different methods for displaying media, compare their functionalities, and ensure you choose the best approach for your chatbot needs. First, let us use an image block to display an image. We put a variable URL in the link box and use a set block assign the URL of the image to the variable. If we do a test run, we can see the image showing up. Sometimes we have base64 data and we need to add the image type prefix as shown in our previous video, which has the image generated by the text to image AI model. After the model returns the base64 data, we concatenate the prefix and the data. Then, we put the image data to an image block and display the image to the user. In the following, we will show how to display an audio to the user. In this chatbot, the audio has all the features needed. For example, the user can tune the sound volume or mute the audio. It has the option to choose different playback speeds. He can click the button to play the audio. We can also pause the audio. This works perfectly. Let us go to the VoiceFlow canvas to see the back end. We have the set block to assign the URL of the audio to the variable URL. This audio file is provided by Google. We can make a copy and open it in the browser, and we can see it is an MP3 audio. In the text block, we add the audio tag and controls an SRC attribute from the variable URL. We need to publish the bot, refresh the web page, and start a new chat. We can see the audio is showing up. This works because we have an audio URL and put the audio tag and URL in the text block. We will show you another method. In the set block, we add the URL of a local file, which is located in the demo folder. Let us go to the localhost www folder. We have the JS files, the HTML file, and this audio file. I have downloaded the file and placed it in this folder. This URL is pointing to this local file. Next, we use an action block with the name of ext underscore audio to connect to the extension, which can load the audio file from the same folder. In the body section, we add key value pairs in JSON format. We have the audio URL and set the autoplay and controls as true. The default path is complete and we turn on the stop on action to wait for the user's response. We use a text block to say thanks for listening when the user finishes. Let us publish the bot and test it on the website, start a new chat. And we see the audio has been loaded and it is automatically started because we have set the autoplay as true. We test everything, which works well. When we are at the end of the audio, the bot will move to the next step to display, thanks for listening. This gives a better user experience. Next, we will show you how to display a video. Very similarly, we can use a set block to add the URL of the video to the variable URL. This video is from VoiceFlow. In the text block, we put a video tag and controls and SRC attribute from the variable URL. This is very similar to the audio. Instead of audio, we have a video tag here. Next, we use a text block to say thanks for watching. Now let us publish the bot and test it on the website. We can see the video has been loaded and we can click to play the video. It has all the controls and we can make the video full screen. We have other options. But we have already seen the thanks for watching even before the video finishes. The bot has already moved to the next step before the user finishes the video. We will solve this problem by using a custom action block. In the next method, we have a set block to set the URL variable to the address of a local video file, which has been placed in the same folder. In the www folder, we can see the mp4 video here. So the URL is pointing to the location of this video. In the action block, the name is ext underscore video, which connects to an extension to load the video from the local folder. In the body section, we also have the video URL from the variable and set autoplay and controls as true. Similarly, the default path is complete and we turn on the stop on action to wait for the user's response. 
We use a text block to say thanks for watching when the user finishes. Let us publish the bot and test it on the website. Start a new chat. And we see the video has been loaded, and it is automatically started because we have set the autoplay as true. We do not see the thank you now. Until the video is finished, the thanks for watching appears. This gives a much better user experience. So we prefer to use a custom action block to control the flow. For YouTube videos, as Google does not release the video's real file address, we will need to use an iframe to display it to the user. In the following, we are going to show you another important application of the text block. We will put an iframe code in the editor to display a YouTube video to the user. Let us go to my YouTube channel and click this video. On this video, right-click the mouse and click on the copy embed code to make a copy of the iframe code. Let us go back to the voice flow canvas and paste the iframe code in the text editor. We will need to modify the iframe code a little bit in order for it to work. We will store and replace the URL with a variable. The first thing we are going to do is to change the width and height to auto. This will let the iframe automatically adapt the width of the chatbot window and keep the original width to height ratio. Next, let us drop a set block onto the canvas. Click the button to create a new variable. Enter the name of the variable URL and create it. As I have already created one, let us click to cancel. We can select the variable URL from the variable list. We then select the URL, make a copy, and paste it on the box between the quotation marks. We connect these blocks. We are going to replace the URL with the variable. In the SRC attribute, we delete the URL and enter the variable surrounded by the curly braces. That is it. In summary, we have shown how to display images, audios, and videos in voice flow and compare different methods. We prefer to use a custom action block to control the logic and give a better user experience. Hope this video helps. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.